Have you ever bought something and then thought, that was dumb? Yeah, me too. We've all done it, and that includes on a cruise. But I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I have made. Or even better, I hope that you can avoid the waste of time or money on your cruise that you don't learn until you've actually sailed a few times. That's why I'm going to get into some of the biggest waste of money and your time on a cruise ship right now. The first cruise I ever took, my wife and I, we booked an ocean view cabin. The cabin itself, it was perfectly fine and we did enjoy being able to look out the window. But now I realize that these cabins are often a waste of money. Here's the deal. For most people, the choice is between interior, ocean view, and balcony cabins. If an interior cabin costs $500 and a balcony cabin costs a thousand, then you'd think an ocean view would cost in the middle, say 750. Sometimes that is the case, but certainly not always. Look around and you will see that ocean view and balcony rooms, they're often closer together in price. So if it's 500 bucks for an interior and a thousand bucks for a balcony, then the ocean view, it's closer to say 900. In that case, just spend a little bit extra and get your own balcony instead of only a window that you can't even open. Or if you don't wanna spend that much and you wanna sell cheap, then save the money altogether and go with the interior cabin. But often the pricing for ocean view rooms, it just doesn't make any sense. Now you can't bring beer or liquor on your cruise, but you can bring wine and champagne. It's usually just a bottle per adult in the cabin. And if you drink these beverages and don't bring them with you on the cruise, then you're wasting your money. Wine prices, they vary on the ship based on what you want to drink, but at a minimum, you should expect to spend around eight to 12 bucks a glass and sometimes considerably more. With a standard pour, a bottle of wine has about five glasses in it. So even if you drink the cheap stuff on the ship, then expect the bottle that you bring on board to be worth about $40 and it only goes up from there. And so you don't waste a bunch of time trying to open that bottle. Be sure to pack a corkscrew or buy a bottle with a screw on cap. When the ship docks in a port of call, you'll often find that people are very eager to get off the ship. This is especially the case on debarkation day when it's time to head home. Now, it has eased somewhat as many cruises, they're still sailing at less than full capacity. But when the ship is packed, heading down to get off the ship right when they start to let passengers off can be a huge waste of time. Sure, if you have to get off right at the start of debarking, then by all means head down. More often than not, however, it seems to just be a recipe for waiting in line pack shoulder to shoulder with other passengers. I think most people, they would be better served if they just let the crowds die down for about half an hour before trying to get off the ship when it docks. Yes, many people choose to completely disconnect on their cruise, but more and more people, they opt to keep in touch during the trip by connecting to the ship's Wi-Fi. And cruise lines, they are happy to let you use their service for a price. Internet on the cruise ship is expensive. Expect to spend around 15 to 20 bucks per day to connect. In fact, some people may think that spending upwards of $150 for a week of internet while on the cruise ship is a waste of money altogether. But cruise lines, they offer packages at different levels. There's usually a slower connection for less money and a faster service for only slightly more. From my experience, going for the slower connection is a waste of money. Even the fastest connection on the ship is still slower than what you're used to back home. The cheaper, slower connections, they can be painfully slow to the point that they can feel useless at times. Considering that the prices can only be slightly higher for the faster connection, if you are buying the internet on your cruise, it's a waste to go with a slower speed, even though you'll end up spending less. Cruise passengers, they are a funny bunch. The end of the cruise, everyone can't wait to get off the ship. But the start of the cruise, tons of people show up as early as they can to board the ship. That can mean being turned away or sometimes having to simply sit and wait in the terminal. These days, cruise lines, they usually have staggered boarding. Instead of a wide open call during the several hours of a ship's boarding, 
passengers select a boarding window of about 30 minutes, say for example, from 1 to 1.30. Even so, people seem to love to show up as early as they can, even if they've selected a later window. Sure, sometimes it works to get on the ship earlier. Other times, however, you will be turned away because it's not your time yet. And I've shown up right when boarding opens, only to have to sit in the cruise terminal for close to an hour before the ship was ready for passengers. In other words, you'll usually save time if you just show up a little later during the boarding time. We're all going to forget something at home for our cruise, just the way things are. You'll be out in the middle of the ocean and realize that you didn't bring any deodorant or you left your razor before you left the house. But if you do forget something, then know that you can buy toiletries on the ship. But you should also know that the costs on the ship can be eye-watering. I'll never forget heading down to the store on board and seeing a bottle of Dayquil for $18 or a pack of dental floss for more than five bucks. It's ridiculous. So be sure that you pack anything you might need and try not to forget anything. If you do and can live without it, then waiting until you head to a port of call can also save you money. There will always be a small shop or a pharmacy that has what you need for cheaper than on the ship. Drink packages can absolutely be a big money saver, but cruise lines put in all sorts of little rules and fine print that can make them a waste if you aren't careful. Just as a rule of thumb, packages are priced to where a person needs to have about five to seven cocktails or eight to 10 beers a day to break even on the cost of the package. But non-alcoholic drinks can reduce the number of beverages needed to break even. But then you have to buy packages for the entire cruise, not just on some days. So if you want to take it easy and not drink one day, you're still paying for the drink package. And most lines, they have rules that say if one person in the cabin buys the drink package, then all adults in the cabin have to buy it, whether they want it or not. Don't get me wrong. You can potentially save with the package, but you can also waste a lot if you were not careful. With 4,000 passengers on a cruise ship and all the charges, all the accounts and special requests, yeah, the line at guest services on board, it can get long. And there are definite peak times like the evening before the ship returns to port or the first day on the cruise ship. If you're staying in line during these times, then I hate to tell you that you're likely wasting your time. Guest services, it's open around the clock. There will be plenty of times when you pass by that there's hardly anyone in line. And then you can also give them a phone call from your cabin as well if you want to. The bottom line is that if you're standing in a long line waiting to speak to guest services, then you're likely just wasting time that you could be enjoying your cruise. Thank you for watching and remember, people want to know what you think are the biggest wastes on a cruise. Just put them in the comments below. If you have an upcoming trip, be sure to visit cruisely.com or the rest of the YouTube channel here for tips and advice. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe if you found this video useful. Until next time, happy sailing.